Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Willis, and you will love economics. Economists study how changes in aggregate demand and aggregate supply impact economic indicators across the economy. Among the most important indicators that are analyzed are price level, real GDP output, and the unemployment rate. These three economic indicators tell us how we're doing with the economic goals of promoting long-run economic growth, preventing excessive unemployment, and limiting inflation. Luckily, there's an easy way to visualize the impact of changes in aggregate supply and demand on the inflation rate and the unemployment rate. It's called the Phillips Curve. In 1958, A.W. Phillips, professor of economics at the prestigious London School of Economics, published a paper that touted a new theory that he had developed. Phillips argued that an inverse relationship existed between wage rates and the unemployment rate in the short run. Phillips based his argument on research that he had conducted on price levels, wages, and unemployment between 1861 and 1957. Ultimately, the research data supported Phillips' conclusions. But, over the years, economists had added to Phillips' theory and had proven that the same inverse relationship exists between the inflation rate and the unemployment rate as well. This means that as the economy experiences real GDP expansion and the unemployment rate falls, price levels rise and the aggregate economy experiences inflation. And, as the economy experiences real GDP contraction and the unemployment rate rises, price levels fall and the aggregate economy experiences deflation. Let's break down the Phillips curve. This is the short-run Phillips curve. The downward slope of the curve visualizes the inverse relationship between the inflation rate and the unemployment rate in the aggregate economy. Any point on the curve represents the inflation rate and the unemployment rate that the economy is currently experiencing. Any movement along the curve from one point to another represents a change in economic conditions that have caused a change in both the unemployment rate and the inflation rate in the economy. For example, suppose that consumers across the United States economy see an increase in their disposable income. With more disposable income to spend, consumers will buy greater quantities of real GDP output at every price level. This increase in consumer spending will cause an increase in aggregate demand across the entire economy. As aggregate demand increases, price levels will increase through demand pool inflation and real GDP output will increase as firms boost aggregate quantities supplied to meet increased consumer demand. To produce greater output, firms will hire more workers, causing the unemployment rate to decrease in the aggregate economy. The change in the inflation rate and the unemployment rate for this aggregate economy can be visualized on the graph for the short-run Phillips curve. With a movement along the short-run Phillips curve from point A to point B, we can conclude that the economy has experienced an increase in the inflation rate and a decrease in the unemployment rate as a result of an increase in consumer disposable income and the subsequent increase in aggregate demand. Now suppose that Congress decreases its expenditures on military goods. The cuts in federal spending means that the government is buying fewer quantities of real GDP output at every price level. This decrease in government spending will cause a decrease in aggregate demand across the entire economy. As aggregate demand decreases, price levels will decrease, causing deflation, and real GDP output will decrease as firms reduce the aggregate quantity supplied to adjust for decreased demand levels. To scale back their output, firms will fire workers, causing the unemployment rate to increase in the aggregate economy. The change in the inflation rate and the unemployment rate for this aggregate economy can be visualized on the graph for the short-run Phillips curve. With a movement along the short-run Phillips curve from point B to point A, we can conclude that the economy has experienced a decrease in the inflation rate and an increase in the unemployment rate as a result of a decrease in government spending and the subsequent decrease in aggregate demand. A movement along the short-run Phillips curve indicates that the inflation rate has increased and the unemployment rate has decreased or the inflation rate has decreased as the unemployment rate has increased. But what if both the inflation rate and the unemployment rate either increase or decrease at the same time? Only a shift of the entire short-run Phillips curve can visualize such a change in the aggregate economy. For example, suppose that the price of steel increases in the United States. 
Steel is a vital resource in the production of goods and services in the American economy. And as it becomes more expensive, production costs increase, and firms will produce lesser quantities of real GDP output at every price level. This increase in resource costs will cause a decrease in short-run aggregate supply across the entire economy. As short-run aggregate supply decreases, price levels will increase through cost-push inflation, and real GDP output will decrease as consumers reduce the aggregate quantity demanded as products become more expensive. When scaling back their output, firms will fire workers, causing the unemployment rate to increase in the aggregate economy. The change in the inflation rate and the unemployment rate for this aggregate economy can be visualized on the graph for the short-run Phillips curve. By shifting the short-run Phillips curve to the right, we can conclude that the economy has experienced an increase in the inflation rate as well as an increase in the unemployment rate as a result of an increase in resource costs and the subsequent decrease in short-run aggregate supply. Now suppose that Congress increases per unit subsidies to all firms in the domestic economy. American firms will receive grant money from the government that they will use to buy more capital and equipment, hire more workers, or pay for production costs. This increase in government subsidies will cause an increase in short-run aggregate supply across the entire economy. As short-run aggregate supply increases, price levels will decrease, causing deflation, and real GDP output will increase as consumers boost aggregate quantity demanded as products become less expensive. When scaling their output, firms will hire more workers, causing the unemployment rate to decrease in the aggregate economy. The change in the inflation rate and the unemployment rate for this aggregate economy can be visualized on the graph for the short-run Phillips curve. By shifting the short-run Phillips curve to the left, we can conclude that the economy has experienced a decrease in the inflation rate as well as a decrease in the unemployment rate as a result of an increase in per unit subsidies and the subsequent increase in short-run aggregate supply. A.W. Phillips' theory regarding the inflation rate and the unemployment rate has been applied to the long run as well. In the long run, an aggregate economy produces its full capacity level of real GDP output with the full employment of its resources. This means that an economy is producing economic goods at an unemployment rate of 4 to 6 percent, or the natural rate of unemployment that is attributed to the level of frictional and structural unemployment that cannot be prevented. This means that regardless of the inflation rate in the economy, the economy is producing its optimal level of real GDP output at an optimal unemployment rate. This is the long-run Phillips curve. The vertical slope of the curve visualizes the constant relationship between the inflation rate and the unemployment rate in the long run in the aggregate economy. This means that the unemployment rate does not change even when price levels change in the aggregate economy. As a result, the long-run Phillips curve visualizes the natural rate of unemployment at which the economy can produce its full capacity level of real GDP output. For example, Suppose that the United States economy can produce its full capacity of real GDP output at an unemployment rate of 5%. Now assume that college tuition costs decrease by 25% in the United States. As the price of higher education falls, potential members of the workforce will find it easier to acquire human capital and trade skills, meaning they'll be more productive than they once were when they joined the labor force. This means that the American workforce will now be more productive meaning that the capacity of the United States economy to produce real GDP output will increase in the long run. This decrease in college tuition costs will cause an increase in long-run aggregate supply and increase the production possibilities of the American economy at full employment. As long-run aggregate supply increases, price levels will decrease, causing deflation, and real GDP output will increase as firms boost aggregate quantity supplied at their new capacities. With a greater capacity to produce, firms will hire more workers, causing the natural rate of unemployment to decrease in the aggregate economy. The change in the inflation rate and the unemployment rate for this aggregate economy can be visualized on the combined graph for the long-run and short-run Phillips curves. By shifting the short-run and long-run Phillips curves to the left, we can conclude that the economy has experienced a decrease in the inflation rate, as well as a decrease in the natural rate of unemployment as a result of an increase in workforce productivity and the subsequent increase in long-run aggregate supply. Ultimately, the United States has experienced long-run deflation and can now produce its full capacity of real GDP output at a lower unemployment rate. 
Now suppose that the United States economy can produce its full capacity level of real GDP output at an unemployment rate of 4%. Assume that the United States government places trade restrictions on foreign inputs. Imported resources used in the production of goods and services in the American economy will be harder to acquire and production will decrease in the long run. As a result, American firms will lose the capacity to produce real GDP output at every price level. This decrease in resource availability will cause a decrease in long-run aggregate supply and decrease the production possibilities of the American economy at full employment. As long-run aggregate supply decreases, price levels will increase through cost push inflation and real GDP output will decrease as consumers reduce aggregate quantity demanded as products become more expensive. With a reduced capacity to produce, firms will fire workers, causing the natural rate of unemployment to increase in the aggregate economy. The change in the inflation rate and the unemployment rate for this aggregate economy can be visualized on the combined graph for the long-run and short-run Phillips curves. By shifting the short-run and long-run Phillips curves to the right, we can conclude that the economy has experienced an increase in the inflation rate as well as an increase in the natural rate of unemployment as a result of a decrease in resource availability and the subsequent decrease in long-run aggregate supply. Ultimately, the United States has experienced long-run inflation and now can't produce its full capacity quantity of real GDP output at the same unemployment rate. Instead, it can only produce its full capacity level of real GDP output at a higher natural rate of unemployment. And that's the Phillips Curves. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red button below so you can receive alerts about new videos when they become available. If you enjoy the channel or find my videos useful, let me know by liking the video and feel free to leave a comment below. We have full video lectures on every topic in macro and microeconomics, as well as quick macro and micro minute videos for cram sessions and quick reviews. If you'd like to learn more, you can click here for my macro minute video on secrets of the Phillips curve, or you can click here for all of my videos on monetary policy. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on You Will Love Economics.